Chris Robinson, Strategic Account Manager with uh, NOAA Software. Welcome to uh, today's session. We're going to start off with uh, introductions, and then we're going to have an Oracle SIBO uh, update. We're then going to move on to the uh, NOAA UEM User Experience Management Drives SIBO Open UI Adoption. We'll have uh, questions and answers, and then go on to uh, next steps. I'm very pleased to uh, introduce our two presenters today, uh, starting off with uh, Mark Farrier. And Mark is the Director of Product Management at Oracle, has worked with the Siebel product for well over 15 years, and he leads the core technology team for Siebel CRM on-premise solutions. I know and have met Mark, and I, I think you'll see he'll put on a, a tremendous presentation today. Mark will be followed by Ilya Epstein, and Ilya has been helping customers realize value from their enterprise applications for well over a decade. He helps our, pers our prospective customers leverage our patented technology to identify new ways to improve user adoption, gain insights on how they can achieve new and improve value out of their Siebel investment. Well, as you can see, our mechanic here is trying to figure out what's, what's wrong, and it used to be so easy to do that. So I'd like you to think of NOAA as a tool to provide clues as to where your organization is not eff efficiently firing on all cylinders or may not even start when it rains. Have you ever had a car like that? I can tell you I have. When I first started the drive, it was easy to work on my 63 Ford engine. I could easily change the spark plugs, adjust the carburetor, and be back on the road in no time. Well, I ask you, try to do that today with today's complicated cars, especially when the dreaded check engine light comes on. Now, why would I say check engine light? I say that because NOAA UEM has similarities to the onboard computer and software that auto technicians use to quickly guide them to the root cause of why that dreaded engine light came on in the first place. Technicians use these tools to eliminate most of the guesswork, save time, money, and get your car back on the road quickly. Ideally, you leave a satisfied customer instead of being irate and venting on social media. In today's session, Ilya is going to demonstrate how NOAA UEM guides IT and line of business management to specific user, customizations, and or locations where the uh, Siebel applications are not performing up to accept, acceptable standards or management's committed to, making, to taking productivity to the next level. Ideally, the end result is that your organization will now have data-driven decisions and not do guesswork in terms of what's going on with your, uh, your Siebel implementation. Second end result is going to be improved user adoption. As an example, one, one NOAA customer discovered that less than 25% of the existing customizations were actually being used by their end users. Why invest the time, money to bring forward outdated, uh, outdated uh, customizations? Another customer realized that 48% of internal support tickets were logged as user education and adoption errors. After six months, months of using NOAA, that number has decreased from 48% down to 13%. Tremendous productivity improvement. NOAA provides baseline trading data to, to determine if users are ready for production. Well, before we jump into the NOAA demo, first let's hear from Mark Farrier, who will provide us with a Siebel update and demonstrate that this rich and functionality enterprise application has an entirely new look, feel, and will add tremendous value to your organization. Mark? Hi, my name is Mark Ferrier. I've been, as Chris mentioned, I've been uh, with Siebel since 1999 and then Oracle after they acquiesced us. Um, you just saw the safe harbor statement. I have to show it. Uh, so anyway, we'll go on from there. We've actually, uh, in the last three years, changed the strategy of how we approach uh, our, our development of Siebel. Uh, next slide, please. Um, we've broken it into uh, so our upcoming investment things that we're going to continue to focus on, these may change over time, but right now this is the, the main focus of what we're doing. We're, we're developing in the customer experience area because of all the mobility and social uh, and networking that's ongoing, and we'll be continuing to improve the product in those areas. 
we will always continue to improve our industry apps. We have over 20 industry-specific uh, modules um, for all of Siebel. It's not just isolated to certain functionality. It, it, the entire product is, is industry-focused and specific depending on the industry. If you have any questions on any of those industries, you can always contact me after. And, and if I don't know it, I will know someone who will, and I can get you in contact with them. And then the last piece we're focusing on is continued improvement in the area of business agility. What, what business agility is, is things such as install, upgrades, um, patching, patch processes, um, anything to do with trying to streamline how you uh, keep up, upkeep and maintain your Siebel environment, as that is a pain point for customers that we want to continue to um, uh, streamline and, and uh, make more efficient. Uh, next slide. And then I'll go over the roadmap of how we go about doing that. Um, go ahead and activate the rest of the slide, if you would, please. Um, you, this just saves time. So anyway, what we have here is uh, how we as you can see from uh, 2012, we've changed our approach here. We, instead of doing release after release, which uh, are hard to upgrade to and uh, hard to keep our own customers current, we changed our strategy about three years ago to go with what we call an innovation pack, hence the IP uh, derivative here that you see. Uh, innovation pack allows us to add feature functionality into an existing product line. And so we have two eligible product lines that we have been doing this to. Um, uh, some of you are on 811 and some of you are on 822. Um, those are actually now functionally equivalent, equivalent as of IP 2012. Um, what we did there was we synced them both up at that time. So now all of our patch sets are created and the same patch set works on both product lines. And and as you can see here, we, we have plenty of plans for the future going all the way out to 2020. That doesn't mean it ends. Uh, if you go to Open World next year, you'll see everything shifts to the left and uh, um, there will be IP 2021 on there. So there is no end date that as far as anyone knows. Um, I, I won't know much after uh, IP 2021 because uh, I'll, I'll probably be looking to retire at that point. So anyway, <laughs> we'll move on from there. Next slide. And to go over what we uh, went over at Open World and, and announced, um, we did a lot of innovation this year. Uh, we delivered IP 2013, which everyone is has uh, is starting to move to, and we we're just released this week IP 2014. Go ahead and next slide, please. And uh, in the area of business agility, as I mentioned, we have done a, a whole bunch of work to try and uh, re. Uh, Streamline these areas. Uh, download and install patching. Install patching has been completely changed and, and renovated. Um, so there's a complete new way to do this now. It's very streamlined, a lot quicker. Um, we've actually cut down the size of the objects that you have to download. So it's even streamlined the process for pulling from our own uh, um, Oracle uh, cloud uh, when you when you pull the software down. We've also done a, an autumn, a thing called IRM, Incremental Repository Merge, which automatically does a comparison for you from old, from your existing to ours and makes it streamlined to uptake everything much easier. Uh, it does streamline the upgrade quite a bit. Um, that said, you have to get to IP 2012 or higher to take advantage of this. So. Your first upgrade to one of those levels, IP 2012, uh, 2013, and now 2014, um, you don't have to do them in sequence. You can check choosing any of those and go to that from wherever you're sitting on Siebel now, um, even uh, all the way back to 7.7 .7 or 7.8 sub Siebel. Um, and uh, once you get to that level, then you can take advantage of all these enhancements for the future. You'll be able to add new feature functionality with a lot less effort than, than the past, and all of the upgrade horror stories that you have heard about Siebel should start to change over the next few years. Um, and then we've also updated uh, monitoring and diagnostic areas, and uh, also are partnering in those areas with people such as NOAA uh, to try and improve that for customers as well. Um, you can get, uh, um, let's uh, go on to the next slide. It's a little more detail. 
uh, in, in this area of business agility, we've also we're trying to continue to improve this. So our main goal is to get to uh, no more SRFs, all configuration metadata versioned in the database. We haven't got there yet, but that's just so you know that's where we're trying to get to. And and then uh, also the ability to make configuration changes of uh, these applets fields um, into the UI without any downtime. Uh, we haven't got there yet either. Just wanted you to see that that's where we're targeting and, and where we'll be going. We have made part of the way there, so you'll see those some of the improvements that, in those areas when we when we when you get to uptake these newer versions. And, and you'll become familiar with those as you as you learn how to do the new process. Uh, next slide. Okay, we've now this is the biggest area of focus in the last couple of years. This was actually triggered when we, you know, in working with Microsoft, we found out that the ActiveX controls that we had our old client called Siebel High Interactive Client, HI Client is the short uh, abbreviation of it. Has uh, we knew from Microsoft that they're going to be uh, end of lifing ActiveX controls. Since we had that discussion and made our all our decisions, they have of course extended the life of that a little bit, but it's not to the full support that it used to have. Um, so it was good that we made the decision we did. So we, four years ago, we decided to start creating a new client uh, called OpenUI, and that's what this is. Um, it completely is a new uh, interface that works uh, basically it's standards based on CSS and HTML and it's and Java. And it allows you to um, support any browser, any device with the same code base. And that's the premise of it. And um, <clears throat> next slide. That translates into new areas, which we're just releasing this current release that was just GA this week, IP twenty fourteen, the responsive web design. Um, what that is, is uh, you're all familiar with this and your own use of any smart technology, smartphone or tablet, is that you go to the same URL for any um, company or product and you'll see it resized to, you know, to whatever the device size is and, and that's what we've added to the product now. Um, there is some work to be done on the customer side because you need to pick what you want to show on these devices. Uh, you can't have I mean, you could actually say show everything on a screen that's on a PC, on a phone, but obviously it's going to be so small no one can see it. So you got to make some decisions and and uh, streamline it to uh, to the device that it's in use. And so that's what responsive web web design will do. It'll recognize the device, and based on the selection of the customers as to what they want, it will allow them to um, be used. And you only have to do this once. So uh, once you code for this, um, it the same view will will work on any device, but it'll also resize and uh, according to your priorities, drop down to something that's reasonable and usable on the device in use. Uh, next slide. Uh, we also have uh, enhanced in the area of personal UI driven UI. So even if you do have all of the Siebel access and functionality capability, what we've been, we're finding in the in reality is customers think it's too much, and so they they need the ability to streamline it down to something that's useful just for their own job, and they're able to do that now. We've had this functionality for a while, but now we've really enhanced it in the field service area. So um, we'll continue to do that. Um, we've also added the capability of like you know hooking in either Google Maps or or uh, um, MapQuest or whatever you want to hook into third party wise, so you can leverage that and into into your um, implementation as well. Things, things like that. Um, next slide. We've also enhancing you know the three three hundred sixty view of the customer, so you can have all of this at your fingertips depending on the device. Uh, once again, the device will sort of limit this. Um, you'll see a lot more on a tablet than you will on a phone, but you should be able to access any information you need if you know how to navigate uh, via your, what you've chosen to have on your device. Uh, next slide. Uh, next. Uh, okay. And that's all that I had for, for – uh, there's a lot more that, that's there, but I was trying to keep this short so we could focus on NOAA. Um, I will say um, – why are we working with NOAA? We're working with NOAA and other vendors like them because 
one thing we're seeing is a massive uptake of, of our new products, and especially due to open UI, customers are, by the hundreds if not thousands, are already uh, migrating to it now uh, due to the fact that Microsoft announced the end of life of Internet Explorer 8, which is the last version of Internet Browser that supports the old HI client. And so now we're already on, you know, IE 10, IE 11, most customers are on, and the only version of that browser that supports, that Siebel supports is using Open UI. So customers, if they need to move that, either due to their IT org or because of what they need, um, they have to get to Open UI as fast as possible. So we're working like, with partners like uh, NOAA that help, help in, uh, in many ways to, to help with that migration. Um, um, quick thought process on if you if you happen to have NOAA already, how could you use it to streamline your migration to Open UI? Well, you can track the usage of your views, and in a lot of cases, uh, a lot of analysis we've seen is that, and even our own analysis, is uh, say you're a customer who, who licensed 5,000 views of, views of Siebel, and then you had an integrator come in who proceeded to uh, customize 1,000 views of Siebel. Well, in reality, on average, no matter what the size of the Siebel customer is, the usage of those actual views is really you know, probably 100 or less. Um, so what you can do with NOAA, I mean, there's just one use of it, um, is you can, if you have it announced, you can see what, what the usage is and figure out which of those views are being used. And you can either choose to migrate the others later or choose to not migrate them at all if they've never been used based on the usage you track in NOAA. And you can streamline. Everybody hears the migration number to open UI, and it's always a scary number because when an integrator tells you anything, they're going to just tell you, we're going to integrate all of these views, whether you use them or not, and they charge you for every one of those. And uh, it's most of the time not necessary. You could streamline and cut your costs way down with a tool like this. I mean, you can always do that analysis by hand, but it's it's a little tougher um, and takes longer. And that also, they'll say they'll do that for you too for a huge charge as well. So. When everybody always gives a number for Siebel's implementation and migration and or upgrades are very expensive, I guarantee you that 75 to 80 percent of that number, if not more, is due to the integrator charges that, that occur. Now, that's not to blame all integrators. Some of them don't do that. But, uh, you know, they're in it for, you know, if they can get people in the door and, and continue to build, that's kind of what they do. So I used to be one. So. Um, anyway, I'll leave it at that, and I don't need to preach that. Everybody on this, uh, anybody who deals with software should know that already. So, anyway, I'll, I'll t hand it back to Chris, and, and we'll be happy to answer any questions down the road at, at the end of this presentation. And again, thank you, Mark, very much for that uh, very thorough uh, uh, Siebel update. And I guess it's, it's so important to remember that uh, Siebel has hundreds and, well, thousands of customers, global customers, and really a who's who of the Fortune 500, uh, from hundreds of users up to greater than 10,000 users. Companies open their doors every day, uh, do their internal help desks, external help desks, 20 plus industry specific verticals that they rely on Siebel to help manage their client base. And we're dedicated to helping uh, Siebel users uh, drive adoption, improve, really uh, improve productivity. And yes, Mark, you're absolutely correct. We, we absolutely believe and we work with many systems integrators to use NOAA in the pre-open UI uh, assessment to determine which customizations to bring forward. And I think you'll see with Ilya today how uh, NOAA UEM can be used after the uh, you've you've made that uh, leap over to uh, Open UI to monitor user adoption, uh, monitor performance, and monitor training effectiveness. So, uh, having said that, uh, I'll turn this over to Ilya. Ilya, it's all yours. Thank you, Chris, and thank you, Mark, for a great presentation on the SIBO roadmap. So today I want to talk about the value that UEM by NOAA brings for open UI projects. So when we look at any SIBO open UI migration, um, there's really three aspects to that migration. The first one, of course, is the technical upgrade. Uh, this is a major upgrade. Um, it does involve a lot of components. 
Um, and of course, this is an upgrade, as Mark indicated, that everyone has to go through. Uh, there is a major uh, compelling event that will require everyone to migrate to OpenUI platform to make sure that their SIBO environment is running in a certified uh, manner. The second aspect is around OCM training. OpenUI, as we saw, has a vastly different look and feel. So even not including some of the additional functionality, just the usage of the SIBO application will change. So you have to go through a communication and a training program for your users to make sure that they're ready to accept the new system. And the third aspect, perhaps the most important, is the new functionality that you saw Mark present. Um, there's new functionality that is available to improve usability and productivity of your end users, but even more importantly, there is enhanced capability to improve business agility. And so when you think about the overall open UI project, if you think about the success of that project, it's really three components. You have to have a smooth technical upgrade, um, you have to go through user readiness, make sure that the users are ready to accept the system, and then you really need to make sure that the users are adopting the wealth of new functionality that is available with OpenUI. So the next few slides, I want to talk briefly before I go into a demo about the value that UEM by NOAA brings in each one of these three major aspects. So when we talk about the successful upgrade, and Mark already touched upon this, the first thing that we see customers do with NOAA is shrink the overall footprint of their SIBO application. Um, a lot of our customers that we deal with, the SIBO environment is mature, and over the years it has expanded and grown based on business demand and market demand. And it's becoming really challenging for a lot of customers to really understand what is being used, what is not being used. What custom functionality and custom views are in the field and which ones perhaps we could sunset? So as Mark indicated, one of the biggest values that NOAA could bring pretty much out of the box is the ability to help you shrink the footprint of that SIBO application so that when you're working with a partner, with an integrator to do the OpenUI project, you are focused on those key functionalities that are actually being used in the field. The second aspect, which I think is very important, because when we talk about a technical upgrade, it's a, you know, it's a change management risk, as you have with any enterprise upgrade, you need to be able to benchmark the application performance so that when you go into that upgrade, you understand uh, how you are doing against those benchmarks. With NOAA, the best practice is to start monitoring your existing SIBO application so you could establish those benchmarks so that immediately after the upgrade, you could alert on any variations or negative performance hits to the applications or to the end users. Uh, one of the things that I'll also show you during the demo is that you're actually able to assess the impact of those issues because, you know, very often right after the upgrade, uh, it's a little bit chaotic. There's a lot of issues that occur, and you need to be able to objectively assess the impact of those issues so that you could focus on the most important ones first. And that's where that data-driven approach that Chris talked about comes in. We give you those metrics and that visibility. And then the concept of a user workflow, which I'll show you, the ability to actually see in NOAA step-by-step step, what the end users are doing within the SIBO workflow, every view and every applet that they're going through will actually help you deal with the incident uh, that will surely come about after the initial rollout and the upgrade of OpenUI. So these are the four best practices in assuring a successful update. But it doesn't end there, right? Because it's not just about doing the technical upgrade. You must make sure that your users are ready to accept the new system. So how does NOAA help with user readiness? The first aspect is helping you clearly understand not only which application components are being used and impacted by the upgrade, but also what is the user population that is being impacted, and how do I make sure that I align my training content to the users that actually will benefit from it. 
With no analytics, as I'll show you in the demo, you can actually see clearly which users are using which views and applets. And when you're going through the upgrade, where are the users are struggling and where do you need that additional communication and training? We will also allow you to automatically assess the impact of that training and communication program. Because again, we have the baseline that you will establish before the upgrade, you can actually see where the training has perhaps not been as efficient and effective so that you could very quickly, with real-time data, adjust those communication and training programs. So these four best practices really describe how you assure that the users are ready and are happy to accept the new system. So with that, we want to then go to the next phase. Beyond just accepting the system and using the new open UI functionality, you really want to start taking advantage of those new components that Mark talked about. It's a, a tremendous amount of capability from search to new chat functionality, self-servers, uh, PRM, uh, there is great marketing and loyalty uh, views and applets that are available. So you need to make sure that you're constantly driving adoption of these new functionalities. And that's where NOAA comes in, as Chris talked about, because we have objective metrics in terms of how this functionality is being used globally by your different call centers or field services, you will help drive the overall adoption of that new capability. And then more importantly, you know, Mark also talked about improving business agility through changing and customizing the look and feel of the SIBO application by specific roles, responsibility, or the user population. With our solution, we will help you roadmap and help you uh, drive some of those business agility projects. Now, before I go into a demo, I also just want to mention that really NOAA is more than just a tool in helping you in the open UI migration. Customers beyond migration use NOAA for ongoing sustainment. And if you think about the user life cycle, a typical, you know, SIBO user, we actually bring value in that overall sustainment. So whether it's from onboarding and making sure that you have users that are properly set up, uh, even in a highly turnover environment that they are actually able to use the workflows and execute the right processes that they were, that they were designed for, uh, whether it's improving the workflows and screens within a call center environment, um, understanding proficiency of the end users, helping you understand whether the problem is technology, people, or process related, um, helping your functional support teams drive down the number of user-caused issues or help you reduce the amount of time it takes to investigate a support call from the call center, uh, helping you understand the true end-to-end -end performance of your SIBO application, or even further to drive continuous improvement projects, whether it's to help you improve the call handle times in that call center, increase the customer satisfaction, or improve the overall compliance of the SIBO solution. So when we think about sustainment and our customers in terms of how they adopt the NOAA solution, we typically see the usage of NOAA in four key areas within an enterprise. The first area is, in, is within call center operations. So all of the KPIs that the call center cares about, whether it's the call handle time, whether it's user satisfaction, we could help you improve and drive those better. In a change management, we talked about open UI as one of those change management projects, but there's continuous changes within a SIBO environment, especially for multinational organizations or organizations that have a lot of field services or multiple markets. There's a constant need to improve and create new functionality. So we bring a lot of value during those change management projects. Um, training education, not only in the context of a project, but sustainment education. How do you make sure that you're constantly training the end users to be more efficient and effective? Um, a lot of our customers use NOAA for that purpose. And of course, the functional support, being able to actually drive the cost of your support organization so that your SIBO environment is truly in a sustainment mode, 
and that you're not constantly putting out fires, but you can actually operate in a sustainment uh, environment. So briefly, before I jump into the demo, how does the solution work? So there's three key aspects. The first one is the unique patented technology, which is the NOAA agent. What's unique about the NOAA data and the analytics that you're about to see is the source of that data. Unlike a lot of other tools which monitor the performance of the SIBO application from the back end or various loggings that happen on the server, the, the data that we collect is coming from the user's desktop or laptop. It's the point of interaction of the user with that application. So, this is the only way to actually understand what the end users are really doing as they execute through the SIBO business processes. We take all of that data, we send it to a centralized repository, and then we perform big data analytics to take that data and make sense of it so that we could then present it in a form of dashboards and reports which are targeted for different audience. There are some dashboards that are executive level, some dashboards are intended to be used by the analysts, some dashboards are used by the business teams like the call center operations and so forth. So all of that that I'm going to show you in terms of the dashboards and reports comes out of the box. Um, the agent collection, the analytics, the representation of that data is out of the box and it's the quickest time to value and it's really the cheapest source of this type of data that you could get anywhere. Um, in terms of support for SIBO, we are very much in, uh, in line in terms of the roadmap with our partners at Oracle, so we support all the different types of SIBO versions. Again, whether it's open UI or legacy, we support those as well. And we support different modules, whether it's call center services and others as well. So with that, I'm going to jump into a product demo and show you some of the functionality and how No is actually used within the context of the OpenUI project. Okay, so the first thing I want to talk about, you know, we talked about shrinking the footprint of your SIBO application, and I want to show you what that means. So with our solution, again, because the agent, the NOAA agent, is actually able to see really deeply within your SIBO environment, we could map out in this heat map every single screen, every single view that you have in your enterprise. And you can see in this heat map, the size represents the active time, the color, the darker it is, represents the number of users. So immediately you have full transparency in terms of what functionality is actually being used and what functionality you could actually sunset. So think about the opportunity here. You have about maybe a dozen or so SIBO views which are responsible for 70, 80 percent of the usage. So this is where you're going to focus, this is how you're going to work with your integrators to focus the migration on those areas that are really being used by your users in the field. Now, if you look at the bottom here, it's a big mess, right? You have hundreds, maybe thousands of different views that are not being used. Well, why do I need to move them forward? Why do I need to move them to the next version of SIBO? This is how you start hedging, this is how you start uh, uh, reducing the size of your SIBO footprint. Now, the solution is also really powerful in terms of analytics. Because we're monitoring real users, you could actually get more insight if you incorporate the data about those end users. So we could actually import information from your HR system or your LDAP system about who these users are. What locations are they in? What is their functional role? So that you could really target the migration project based on those business areas that are most critical. So if you're thinking about leveraging some functionality within SIBO Open UI and you want to target specific business areas or specific functional roles, you have that visibility. The next area I want to show you is the ability to benchmark performance. We talked about, you know, in the realm of the technical upgrade, you really want to make sure that you have a clear understanding as to what your end user's expectations are in terms of the performance of the system. Again, with a NOAA solution, you could actually see 
every single operation, and that is a you know a link, a press, a button press within any Siebel view, and understand the end-to-end -end performance of that view and of that operation. And because we're doing continuous monitoring, because we're monitoring these users over time, this is how you're able to establish the baseline period that you can see here on top and compare it with the current period. So this is how you do the analysis before an upgrade and after an upgrade. And based on these variations, you see a lot of red here, right? The response time has actually uh, taken a major hit. You could actually set up alerts and notify your support teams to actually take action immediately after the upgrade. Um, we also talked about impact. Because we're monitoring real production users, you have the ability to actually analyze this data based on the number of users that are being impacted. So you may have areas of the application which have a negative response time, but they're only impacting a one user here and there. You would want to focus as best practice on those areas of the application which are impacting the highest number of users. And then because we have that geographical user information, like their location or their department, you're able to then target and work with the infrastructure team or the system teams to really help them understand where the problem is. Why do we have some locations with a response time that is you know, two, three times worse than other locations? Or what about the user's desktops? Were the user's desktops, are they ready for the upgrade? Or are they still running legacy browsers or legacy versions of the operating system? Why do we have patches of users here with a performance, with a Siebel performance that is 10 times worse than some of their peers? So that's how you can actually use NOAA in terms of shrinking the size of your Siebel um, uh, implementation and then also benchmark the performance of the Siebel solution. The next area we want to talk about is the readiness of the users. And for that, I want to jump into the ability for the NOAA application to actually capture all of the error messages that the end users are encountering. And if you look at the error messages that we capture, unlike back-end monitoring tools which are looking for specific signatures of critical events that occur, with our solution, we're actually capturing the messages as the users see on the screen. So most back-end, you know, back-end type of tools, APM tools, or even tools that look at the, you know, the Java injection, they would actually not be purview to this information. They would not see where an end user is struggling in a specific view or a screen. Uh, where you have queries that are not able to run because you don't have the right information, because you don't have the right filtering set up. Um, every single one of these error messages is captured. And again, because we have the geographical location of the end users or their functional role, you could then start aligning your training content or your communications to the pockets of users where you're going to get your biggest return for your investment. So, for example, I could look at the top screens or the top views within Siebel, quickly identify which ones have the highest number of errors, understand where I should focus. So, why do I need to focus on all functional roles where two roles are responsible for 75% of my errors, create the communication plan, create the training plan, and do this in real time because all of this data that you're getting is coming real time. And then if you want to look at some of the new best practices in training, for example, micro learning or lunch and learns, you can actually get really precise and start looking at those users that are having the highest number of errors. So instead of wasting a lot of training resources which don't necessarily optimize the readiness of your end users, you could be really strategic as well as tactical in terms of targeting your training to those users that are really going to benefit from that. Um, the NOAA solution also allows you to get really granular. So if you want to look at the details of a specific error message 
and you want to really understand where the end user is experiencing and what step of the process the user actually has the error, you have the ability to drill down and capture the exact message, the error message that the user saw on the screen completely with a simple um, error code. And then what's more important, we talked about the user workflow. If you want to really analyze and help that end user, especially after the upgrade, you want to quickly help remediate an incident. This user workflow, which captures every step that the user took in every view, in every applet, in every component of the SIBA application, step by step as they click through the application and they encounter errors, you have all this information at your fingertips. So you know the exact error message, you know the exact time of that error, you know the exact view that it occurred in. So if you think about the functional support, whether it's right after a, an upgrade or even during normal sustainment, 90% of the time during the incident remediation is spent on finding missing information, asking the users to send you screenshots, to send you additional information, with this workflow, our customers are able to reduce the, the uh, troubleshooting time of an incident by 50, 60 percent and then reduce the overall issue, incident through proactive remediation by 30 to 50 percent as well. The last area we want to talk about is the ability to actually improve the agility of your SIBO application after you migrate to OpenUI. And with this, what I want to do is um, actually show you that not only could we zero in with a NOAA data on a specific um, you know, view or specific screen within SIBO, but we could actually look at an end-to-end -end business process as you have defined in SIBO. So whether it's a customer support, uh, move in, move out, uh, you know, creating a new account, doesn't matter. You could actually map those views into an end-to-end -to -end business process and then look at all of the KPIs that we talked about, whether it's the response time of the system, the errors for that end-to-end -end process. So then if you want to start thinking about improving the agility of that process, you could then understand where are the users spending most of my time? Which views, for example, would be most optimal to customize for that specific role or for that specific function? Why are users spending so much time in a simple account screen? Can I improve the layout of that screen? Can I bring in relevant information? Can I use maybe Account 360 or, or that type of functionality to help reduce the amount of time the users are spending in that screen? Or what about the errors that the users are experiencing? Let's take that into consideration. Let's use that as one of the KPIs to decide whether I want to improve the agility of that view. And then, of course, because we have the user and geographical information, I could start investigating and seeing why do I have certain areas which are struggling with that functionality and other users are actually doing really well. And then on the right side, you know, what are specific screens or views that are being impacted? Is it everywhere or is it a specific screen? And what about my end users, right? Is this happening to all the users or is this happening only to some users? This type of dashboard, being able to see the distribution of errors by users or by specific view will help you determine is this a people issue that can benefit from additional training or communication or is this an application issue that I should improve the agility of that screen or that view. So these are some of the key areas that NOAA could really help you expedite the overall migration uh, to OpenUI. And again, most importantly, it's not just a technical upgrade. It's not just a standard OCM and training. It's helping you adopt and helping you develop that business agility that Mark talked about. So with that, I'm going to pass it back to Chris for some closing remarks, and then we're also going to take some questions from the audience um, if there are any. Oh, yeah, thank you so much, as always, for a tremendous presentation of the value that uh, NOAA UEM uh, adds to Siebel. Uh, 
You know, if I'm your CFO or I'm, I'm your CEO, uh, they're most likely asking, going to be asking you, why do you have to upgrade to open UI? Okay, why do I need to uh, upgrade my infrastructure? What our customers have told us was before NOAA and the data-driven results that we provide, that was a real tough, those were real tough questions to answer because they had no before benchmarks. With NOAA and now the Open UI, you're able to show and demonstrate and prove the value that, that upgrading and moving to Open UI, upgrading your infrastructure, whatever it might be, uh, upgrading your training uh, mechanisms, investing, further investing in your systems has really provided tangible and measurable results. Okay, so uh, if, if you see the, uh, on, on the screen now, I, when I, I was thinking of today's sessions, uh, uh, today's seminar, I thought so much of Jack Welsh, who I so admire. Uh, and he's, he writes, of course, an organization's ability to learn, to translate that learning into action rapidly is the ultimate competitive advantage. We absolutely believe Siebel combined with NOAA UEM can help provide your organization that competitive advantage. So let's open this up for some questions. Uh, looking forward to hearing from the uh, users out there, the uh, listeners out there. Okay, so there's a, a question about, uh, well, how is NOAA licensed? Uh, first of all, thank you, and a, a great question. So NOAA is licensed by the user, and uh, if you have a 500-seat uh, user uh, implementation of Siebel, a license is loaded onto uh, each, each user's laptop. And uh, Ilya, if you want to expand upon that. Uh, no, that, that's right. Uh, all of the platform components, all of the dashboards, reports, the analytics, everything is included. So you're just uh, you're just paying for the licensed user, and of course, you could speak to your account manager to get the pricing information based on your Siebel uh, size. Um, but everything else that you saw comes out of the box and is included uh, with the product itself. And Ilya, let me add that uh, you know, as we approach the, the end of Q4. I am certainly very, very motivated to work with the uh, Siebel users uh, that are out there and provide you as aggressive pricing as I possibly can provide. Obviously, the more users you have, the better price that you, uh, you're able to command. So I'm looking forward to hearing from, uh, you know, from all of you out there to talk about how we can not only save you money, but drive more value out of your Siebel investment. Next question was, uh, how long does it take to implement NOAA? And Ilya, if you would address that one, please. Sure, that's a great question. So the, 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 the real beauty of the solution is that we don't have to install anything on your Siebel environment. The way the solution works, as you saw from the presentation, is we have the agents that are collecting the data from the user's desktops or laptops, and that's really the only point of integration with the uh, users. And because of that, because there's no back-end uh, load or back-end aspects with your Siebel environment, we could implement really, really quickly. Um, it's just a matter of setting up a couple of VMs, doing the technical implementation of NOAA, and then, of course, as part of implementation, we actually do uh, training as well as consultative uh, value realization services. Uh, so customers could really be up and running within a few weeks. This is not... Uh, months of work, this is a really rapid deployment, and you get all of this data immediately out of the box. And that's a, that's, those are great points, Ilya. And, and if, if you notice my title as Strategic Alliance Manager, uh, I also work with a number of our Strategic Alliance partners who have deep knowledge of Siebel and probably know your business extremely well. Now, if you take that data that NOAA UEM provides, uh, working with uh, systems integrators, your systems integrator, they can add a tremendous additional value, not only as, as uh, Ilya said, uh, prior to the open UI uh, upgrade, but uh, afterwards and ongoing to continually drive uh, uh, improvement, more value for your organization. 
Are there any other questions out there? Well, then I have two questions for the uh, for our audience today. If you'd be kind enough to drop uh, me at crobinson at noaa.com, a little note on what you saw today, uh, the value you feel you received, if any, and uh, how we could uh, improve our next presentation around this, something that maybe we didn't uh, include today that is important to you. And as far as a call to action, I'm looking forward to hearing from uh, everyone out uh, in the audience today. And I'd like to thank you for your time. I would like to thank Mark and Ilya and uh, everyone from our marketing team for putting today's presentation together. Look forward to hearing from you soon.